with Elijah Crawford on Friday night choosing to go to Syracuse, the Orange now have four defensive linemen in its 2025 class in order in terms of where they rank in recruiting. Eric Thomas leads the way, Halim Muhammad, Nathan Nyandoro, and Elijah Crawford. So those are the four defensive linemen that Syracuse now has in its 2025 class. And to be completely honest with you, you can never recruit enough linemen both on offense and on defense because you really, really need depth, particularly at those positions. Because how often do we see in football where it's one thing to lose a receiver, it's one thing to lose a running back, but if you start losing defensive linemen or offensive linemen, that can just ruin your, the game. It can ruin your season. It's not quite losing a quarterback, but I would say it's second and third. Offensive line and defensive line. Not even a college comparison here, but remember the Chiefs in the Super Bowl against the Buccaneers? Patrick Mahomes had no time to throw the ball because they had lost all their offensive linemen. So going back to the college game, you can never have enough linemen, both on offense and on defense. So even though they have four already, I wouldn't mind seeing one or two more commits in that position group. In total, in the 2025 class with Elijah Crawford's commitment, the Orange have 28 total verbal pledges in its 2025 class. That is now second in the country, only behind Rutgers, which has 29 commitments. So the Orange are, once again, one player behind Rutgers. I believe for a brief moment, they were tied at 28, and then Rutgers got another kid to commit over there. So now it's back to Rutgers has one more than Syracuse. But the Orange, with their 28 total commits, that is really, really solid. And some context for you. I think last week I might have given you guys more context, but just a little brief Summary for you guys, in the class of 2024, Syracuse had 26 total commits, which is pretty solid, not not bad whatsoever, but, you know, they have more this year, which is nice. And in 2023, they had 18 total commits. That's it. In 2023, the final year of Dino Babers, they had 18 total commits commits. That is really bad, especially for a power four, power five program. That's awful. 18, that's it. And they weren't getting 18 of the best players in the country. They were getting 18 three stars and there's nothing against three star recruits. But if you're going to have a low quantity class, you better have a ton of quality in it. So that's the main difference this year. Yeah, they don't have a four or five star recruit yet, and that could easily change, but they do have a ton of players and you need depth. In 2023, Syracuse picked neither. We're not going to have a lot of depth and we're not going to have a lot of quality. So at least it's better than 2023. That 2023 class, by the way, I wrote this down. He was ranked 88th in the nation. 88. They were behind schools like Rutgers, FAU, Rice, and Eastern Michigan. I don't even know how that's possible. Even if Syracuse's class ends up being in about the 40s in the class of 2025, they're not going to be behind schools like that. They won't. Period. So at, at very minimum, Fran Brown has gotten them above that. And they weren't 88th every single year of Dino Babers. But I think you get the idea that Syracuse football recruiting is a lot better than what it used to be. They are right now in 2025 with Elijah Crawford's commitment, the 32nd best class in the country, which is good for about eighth in the ACC. So they're middle of the pack in the conference. There's 17 teams now, so they're actually in the upper half. That's pretty good. Syracuse hasn't been in the upper half of recruiting in quite some time in its own conference, except for maybe 2024 because they were in the top 40 there. I would have to double check on that. But point being, Fran Brown has done an excellent job so far along with the rest of the coaching staff. 
The rankings will inevitably fall for Syracuse if they don't get a four or five star or a couple of four or five stars to commit. But at the end of the day, being at the tops of your rankings is not the end all be all. You have to rely on your own scouting, your own football knowledge if you are a coaching staff to go and find these players. Recruiting services are certainly helpful. It gives us, uh, people like me and, and people like you, a better idea of where these teams stack up. And there's a very positive correlation between having strong recruiting classes on these services to winning and losing. But at the end of the day, these recruiting services do have flaws. They do have their flaws. A lot of it is based on geography. So if it's an area that is heavily scouted, they get a more accurate reading of these kids. If it's in an area that's less scouted, they get a less accurate rating. So that's oftentimes why you'll see a player make be a three-star, but they're from a region that's not heavily scouted. So therefore, are they really a three-star? Are they really worse than that four-star player in a region that's heavily scouted? Or are they just not scouted as much? You get the idea. I hope. At the end of the day, Syracuse has a lot of volume in its 2025 class. Would I like to see them have a four or five star in it? Even multiple of them? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not perfect. But the bar was not set very high in the beginning. And they've already accomplished the initial bar. Can you get Syracuse within the top 50-ish of recruiting year in and year out? Can they do that? And they did it for the class of 2024 in very limited time. And even when they do fall, and Syracuse probably will fall from 32nd, even when they do fall, they will probably still be in the top 50, in all likelihood in the top 50, which is solid. And then you can build that into 2026, where they already have three players in its class And all three are four stars or better, led by five-star Isaiah Williams. So overall, Syracuse football recruiting remains strong. Elijah Crawford adds to that list now 28 total commits in the class of 2025. 